नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मा नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मा नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सम्मा यथ को आवशो न जायते न जीयति न मीयति न छवति न उपजति नाहं तंगमन न लोकस अंतं ज्ञातेयं दठेयं पत्तेयंति वदामीति मे द ट्रिपल जन ब्लेस यू अगेन वी आर मीटिंग एट किनितुला गल फॉरस मोनेस्ट्री इन अ पोए डे इन दिस स्पेशल डे we thought of talking about the nature the universe and the religion what we are following and uh, the story we took as a topic it was uh, rohita's story one brahma came to supreme buddha and asked about the end of the universe end of this world and supreme buddha explained no use of finding the end of this world no use of finding the end of this universe you cannot do it by running from one corner to another corner but you can find the end of the world the universe by observing yourself the length of couple of arms from top to uh, top of the head to the tip of the toes and you will be able to find the end of the world the end of the world means the end of suffering end of birth end of death there supreme buddha explained about this whole universe but it is more easier than running from one place to another rohitas was so impressed and he was very happy and he said he had the experience in his previous life uh bhante i was trying to do this finding the end of this universe the world in my previous life i had lot of uh, supernatural powers and i tried to uh, find the end of the world but i couldn't the whole life in my 100 years i ran from one corner to another with my supernatural powers of absorptions i was having but till the end the death i could not find it so i am very happy you knew that so supreme buddha explained rohitas the all the things how to find this so today we are going to talk about this universe the nature our environment and the religion what we are following supreme buddha teaching we are not going to compare the science and buddhism here we are not going to compare the buddhism and other religions here this is not a criticization but the uh, study the understanding is very important for you to get into the lesson if you believe the lesson you will have confidence about that when you have confidence about the lesson you will have confidence about your teacher when you have confidence about the teacher then you have the confidence about yourself what you are doing confidence means faith in a way in another way it's you respect the teacher and the lesson and the path you are going if not it just we chant something we listen to the stories it's just saying something but practically you do not feel anything you do not experience anything in your life if you do not this correctly so then to get into this you, especially the young crowd they try to find something as a result not just following not just listening not just chanting not just reading so then we have to prove according to the modern sciences the religion what we are believing is correct or wrong then sometimes non religious person like a free thinker or any other religious person he will feel to study this there is no obstacle for anybody 
to come into our religion our religion means buddhism the buddhism is nature and study and experience yourself what is having happening here for that we must understand the nature of the nature so here we know especially the science students they know there are plenty of galaxies in this universe that there is no end where the galaxies are ending you cannot think even here our galaxy is milky way we have given names the closest galaxy as i remember it's andromeda in this huge galaxy there are millions and trillions of stars uh, astronomy those who are learning astronomy they know these millions of stars are responsible as a sun each and every star is a sun this responsibility goes to the different planets around revolving around the sun and when we come to our sun <coughs> not s o n sun this is s u n sun this earth is one of the planets rotating around this sun of uh, when we take millions and trillions one of the millions and trillions of suns mercury venus earth jupiter saturn uranus neptune pluto is out of the order see the science is changing earlier there were nine planets around uh, the sun but now they are not taking you uh, neptune as a, a planet they have take chosen it uh, taking it out uh, so our planet is one of them the earth when you take the earth it is having different continents uh, uh, america south america north america africa australia asia likewise antarctic arctic most of them are starting from a so lot of a's continents are there around our continent in i'm talking at uh, in sri lanka so asia in this this continent we are in south asia sri lanka in this city and the village in this monastery tiny person i'm a very small person when you compare to the universe cannot think even <coughs> so then we have to understand by studying by looking by hearing we cannot complete everything reading listening watching you can learn a lot of things but this learning process is not ending do you know in amazon forest and many other forests there are plenty of animals still human beings they haven't seen haven't recognized haven't named then think about the microorganisms you will uh, we cannot think even but supreme buddha we, through his divine eye the third eye wisdom saw these things no use of following this uh, when i was a student in the university I, i i had to learn about all the animals in for the for zoology in zoology subject very interesting my one of my favorites but after learning a lot about animals finally here after being ordained i got to know i have learned about tirachana uh, realm the animals realm uh, it's uh, we call apaya one of the apaya there are four one of them i have learned in the university animals animal diversity plants of course we are not taking as uh, animals that different in buddhism also that's different but supreme buddha loved the nature a lot so learning process is not ending but according to this uh, supreme buddha's teaching this learning process the wisdom has a destination one day i saw in a uh, writing uh, exercise book the last page the printing the people they have printed a sentence the life is a journey not a destination but i would say there is a destination maybe in this life or any other next future lives you have to find the destination is the completing of your wisdom up to so on sakadagami arahat all this uh, absorptions and the wisdom levels when it comes to the fully uh, enlightened fully saint arahat 
you will understand i don't have experience don't misunderstand me i don't have experience according to supreme buddha's teaching you will realize there is nothing in this world to follow run and find but everything can be found in myself through you so that you have to understand because science has a limit our vision is very limited our hearing is very limited you know the spectrum when you take <coughs> the our uh, normal ordinary eye but i am looking this eye <coughs> we can uh, recognize seven colors and all these colors what i can see around my environment are the mixtures of those seven colors more than that i cannot see for an example i can see these flowers as um, purple these green leaves they are green because the green color comes to my eye and in my eye there is a special part we call chakku prasad through that uh, in science we we say that uh, conic cells and uh, rod cells and corn cells in our retina can recognize this is green but the science the scientists they have found some more uh, rays frequencies which is not detectable by our or normally ordinary ordinary eye like uh, ultraviolet infrared these colors can be reflected by any other being in front of me somewhere here but unfortunately my eye is unable to recognize it means science has proved i cannot see everything because my, that is not a problem of the nature that is a problem of my eye even the ear Uh, 22 to 1000 20000 hertz i can hear but little poor bat can hear more than me even uh, we do not care about dogs but the dog can hear more than you and me because their ear is different the sense is different so have to understand the nature the nature is something what we can see but more than that something is there nobody can learn everything then again we ha- we will feel to study what supreme buddha saw how did he see this feel this environment and how nice person how kind what kind of a nice person he is and he explained us to love the nature and <clears throat> without craving in one story many years uh, before one not our supreme buddha gautama Uh, a previous sikhi sambuddha he had a chief listener called sarabhu both of them went to the brahma realm very far away brahma realm and uh, supreme buddha sikhi buddha invited uh, sarabhu bhante sarabhu to chant to speak to the world there uh, sarabhu arhat sarabhu he chanted very important sentence taught by supreme buddha arbhata nikhamata yunjata buddha sasane dhunata machuno senam nalagarang kunjaro yo imasmin dhamma vine apamatto vihesati ahay jati sansaram dukkha khandam karisati so after chanting this everybody the both of them came to the human world and asked the bantes the monks in the in jetavana did you hear that and the monks who were in the jetavana they told yes we heard it what you were chanting at uh, brahma realm we heard it then when this story was heard by ananda tero because this story was given by abuddh uh, gautama uh, ananda bante was so curious he wanted to learn about uh, the ability of supreme buddha because this sarabhu bante that chief listener just like our sariputta bante they can talk to the world like uh, thousands of worlds chulani loka dhatu sahasri loka dhatu thousands of human world 4000 hells hellish realms uh, 6000 uh, heavenly realms and 16000 rupa avachar brahma realms likewise he can speak they can listen so then ananda bante was so curious how 
about the Supreme Buddha, what kind of an ability is he having? Then Supreme Buddha rejected this question, Ananda, no use of learning about these things. Supreme Buddha's abilities, uh, talents. So Ananda Bhante was so curious, again and again, three times he asked, then, then Supreme Buddha explained Ananda, uh, Sarabhu or Sariputta, these chief uh, listeners, chief uh, Bhantes, if they can speak to thousands of worlds, Supreme Buddha can speak thousand times of thousand times of three thousands. Three means not three thousand, but thousand multiplied by thousand, again thousand multiplied by thousand. That much of a world that Buddha can speak, more than that they can, but learning this is not necessary for you, Ananda. Then Ananda Bhante was so happy how talented my Supreme Buddha was, is. So he was happy and says, Sadhu, see, Supreme Buddha's talents, they can speak, they can see, they can hear. Astronomy, they, have, they say that Neil Armstrong went to the moon, we don't know. Sometimes we have a doubt about that. Different uh, uh, scientific uh, investigations are there, we have a doubt. And they say they have sent different machines and vehicles to the Mars. We don't know whether it's true or false. When the scientists are trying to find the qualities and the appearance and the nature of the moon close by the small tiny uh, particle, not a planet, Supreme Buddha has explained this noble doctrine to uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of worlds. When the astronomy tries to find about stars, looking at the stars, they can stars, the stars are rotating around their head when explaining Supreme Buddha's knowledge. That much of a knowledge. But, did you think about this? 2500 years ago, Supreme Buddha was there. Why didn't he explain about these aeroplanes, helicopters, rockets and all these technologies, computers? Didn't he see those things, these uh, new inventions, technologies? Even I'm talking in front of my camera and for you, and you can see me after, afterwards many times, this technology. He did not explain because these aeroplanes, rockets, uh, helicopters, these computers, all these technologies will never improve your wisdom. Uh, I'm very sorry to say that, but if you listen to Dhamma talks through the computers and these technologies, that's good, I know. But compared to the earlier uh, periods, nowadays, most of the young children, they have addicted to the computers and the mobile phones and it does not improve their wisdom. Knowledge is something else, wisdom is something else. Knowledge means you can uh, study, you can learn a lot of words, this and that, thousands of, of words, and you can retrieve at the examination and you can pass the examination also. But this knowledge is not giving you the real wisdom to understand the whole universe through the, according to Supreme Buddha's teaching, to purify your mind. Though you learn this uh, Tripitaka Noble Doctrine also as words, lot of words you can learn, but these words will never improve your uh, wisdom and never wash out your impurities if you do not do it practically. Shraddha, Prajna, these words, uh, the confidence or faith, the wisdom like Prajna and uh, mindfulness, uh, Sati, those words, they are just words or else the other side, the black side, when we take about uh, the anger, the love, love means that craving, uh, loba, dosa, moha, ignorance, these Pali words or English words, they are just words. You will, if you chant sadda, the confidence or the faith, thousand times in the day, even if, when, if it is not cultivated in your mind, no use of chanting like that. If you chant Prajna, the wisdom, 100,000 times in the day, Prajna, 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 or Sadda, whatever. Even if it is not coming through your mind, it, if it is not developed in you, 
no use of chanting, no use of reading. That knowledge is not coming to the wisdom. When the craving and aversion comes in your mind, if you cannot recognize that I am now, I am in a bad mood, I am angry, I am jealous, I am uh, ha hating somebody, so ill will, revenge. If you cannot understand that, no use of uh, learning those things. So, in meditation, vipassana, Supreme Buddha explains these things. That is the nature, this is the nature of your mind. When it rises in your mind, you have to recognize, I am in a good mood or a bad mood, I am good or bad, so what should I improve and what should I destroy? Then you will realize, okay, I am step by step getting better. And also remember, when you practice meditation, you will never feel that you are improving because it happens, doesn't happen suddenly, it happens very slowly, step by step. Just like the mother and father, they don't feel the sun is grown after many years, even they don't feel it. But another person outside, when, the, when they see the sun, oh, you have grown a lot, big man now. Why? They have seen him after a long time. So your mind is improving step by step when you practice meditation, when you learn about these things, when you read Tripitaka, but it happens slowly, not all of a sudden. Remember that. And our senses are very weak, our eye, our ear, but our mind is very powerful. When you improve your mind into a certain level, you will be able to do different things. But we do not improve our mind or med we do not meditate to show the others the supernatural power, so to read others' minds. When you crave for that, you, it doesn't happen. Last time also I told that. Then you will realize the nature. For an example, when you close your eyes and observe your breath for a, for a minute, you will understand how different, how interesting is this. I don't know how to, how do, I don't know to explain with my experience. The experience is an experience. So you have to do it and get these benefits of meditation. Last time I explained about anapana, meditation, meditation benefits. Today we are going to talk about the nature. So when we take Supreme Buddha, he loved nature a lot. The most important thing is Supreme Buddha's for the birth, Siddhartha Gautama's birth, the little baby born under a tree, not in the palace. It did not happen uh, mistakenly. It happens naturally like that, in a nice uh, garden under a tree. Maya, mother, gave the birth. Not like us, we are born upside down, the head first and uh, fall down and we cry. Not like that. He was completing paramita prerequisites for many years, many years. And uh, this last birth was very special. Scientists cannot prove those things. When he stepped to the earth, the earth cannot bear that, that much of a wisdom and respect. That's why the uh, lotus blooms. But we don't want to prove that from, through science. Science is very poor to understand those things. Once I, earlier I explained and I proved science, science, is, science has proved our eye is not capable of seeing everything. There are rays, there are frequencies we cannot see and hear. So then, we cannot see all the beings in this world. We cannot see everything in this world, everything from everything. Supreme Buddha, after being Buddhahood, he saw everything in everything. The nature of the nature. We cannot think even. To prove that, I don't want to prove to you, but to see that, you have to read it what he has taught us. So, and uh, Buddhahood, um, ascetic Gautama went to the forest and meditate. Finally, he became Supreme Buddha under a tree in the nature. First sermon, Dhamma Chakra, was explained, chanted under a tree. And finally, his last breath, Supreme Buddha's Paranibbana, the death happened under a couple of trees in a garden. So he preferred, he chose most of the times the nature. He loved the nature, that's the reason. One time, after spending 20 years in uh, Jetavana, 
when he was leaving Jetavanarama, he spoke to uh, chief uh, attendant Anand. Anand, this Jetavana garden is so nice. I was so happy to uh, stay here. And it gave me good feeling about see that Supreme Buddha without craving, without attachments, but he explains the beauty and the uh, value of the nature. And because of that, during that uh, his uh, living period of uh, 45 Buddhahood and the whole life 80 years, after being Buddha 45 years, he gave us some rules and regulations to follow. Not like the normal ordinary householders, lay people, monks as the full ordained monks, Upasampada uh, Bhikkhu, they have to follow a certain number of precepts given by Supreme Buddha. That is for our protection, but and also that is uh, to go through this path very quickly compared to a normal ordinary lay person, householder. Uh, Upasampada Bhikkhu has ability and uh, the strength of uh, morality, the sila, the rules go through this path. Sila Samadhi Prajna, the Samadhi Prajna will be improved that uh, mindfulness and the insight meditation, that wisdom will be uh, nicely improved with the support of this sila, the support of these rules and regulations which is given by Supreme Buddha. So then he has asked us to not to cut or disturb plants. This is not a normal sin, normal uh, bad activity for the normal people, uh, lay people, they can cut and clean the place, they can cut branches, they can pluck uh, uh, flowers from the trees, doesn't matter, it's not a sin, don't misunderstand. But for monks, to make their life easier and also to, uh, to make them not to disturb the nature where, living, where, they, are, where they are living, Buddha has given these regulations. The, the siksha, this rule, which was given by Supreme Buddha, still we follow. Till the end of our life, we follow this because that is for our protection. Just like not to kill animals, he has asked us to not to disturb, not to break, not to uh, uproot plants. Love the nature. And also another time there was, do uh, you know silkworms, they make a cocoon. This silkworm make a nice cocoon and um, this cocoon is so valuable to make uh, thread, kind of threads, to make carpets. Once um, some of the set of monks, a group of monks, they requested a lot of carpets made by uh, silkworm thread. And the complaint went to Supreme Buddha. He asked us to not to use silkworm thread carpets anymore. Kosi misakan santan karape nisagyam pachitya. So you cannot use silkworm productions, uh, full loading monks, not you, upasampada uh, bhikkhu. And if the water is having organisms, if you can see that, not microorganisms, you cannot. Uh, remove all the microorganisms from water, it's not possible, but if you can see these uh, different organisms like uh, mosquito caterpillars or something, something like that, they are in the water, you cannot use it and you cannot throw it to the mud or grass because those animals are dying. Uh, then it shows how much Supreme Buddha thought about this, nat this nature and how much he loved and once you can find in uh, Ratana Sutta, the last uh, stanza, Vanappa Gumbe, not last one, before the last ones, Vanappa Gumbe Yata Pusitagge Gimhana Mase Patamasmin Gimhe. This gives us a nice idea about the, the knowledge of Supreme Buddha and how much he enjoyed and how much he appreciated the nature. Vanapakumbe Yatapusitagge Gimhanamase Patamasmingime. In this uh, springtime, uh, April, the month is April, Gimhanamase Patamasmingime. Vanapagumbe, these flowers bloom in the bushes of the forest, and he compared that to the, uh, uh, that he is comparing that 
ගිම්හාන මාසේ පටම මේ ගිම්හේ තතෝපමන් ධම්මවරං අදේසය නිබ්බාන ගාමින් පරමං හිතාය the the noble doctrine the teaching of supreme buddha which is given to improve your knowledge your wisdom is just like these flowers in a short way the supreme buddha's teaching just like these beautiful flowers bloom in april so to compare like this just think how much supreme buddha appreciated uh, and he how much he liked this nature he loved this don't misunderstand this love means not craving again i'm telling you a fully enlightened people do not have a uh, sinful craving sinful attachments uh, anger hatred also they just enjoy feel this environment without having lobha dosa we call akusala impurities without impurities in their mind they enjoy uh, and uh, i remember another uh, nice saying of mahakashapathero in his udana he is explaining i really like the the call and the songs of these peacocks in this pippali near the pippali uh, 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 den he was appreciating the nature that these peacocks are calling singing songs and uh, other other animals are shouting these elephants are uh, trumpeting and tiny uh, he, it is explained about a tiny red beetle like the ladybird a beetles they are walking here and there and very the most important thing is these rocks with mosses even in my case i really like mosses uh, and i grow them in front of my uh, chamber also the, the rocks when the rocks uh, are covered with mosses just like a grassland it's very beautiful and i when i see that i was really happy how much these arahat fully enlightened people explain this nature and appreciate it so staying away of from the nature you will never be able to enjoy your life i don't know how can you enjoy with the computers and the technology but in my case i enjoy in this kinitulagala forest this forest is a very beautiful place not only to meditate but also to uh, sit and wait for a moment take some pure gases oxygen and pure air and you know not only oxygen most of the plants they absorb toxic gases and release good gases to you and it is happening in the environment nature automatically you don't need any gas purifying machines or air conditioning machines or any other oxygen producing machines when you stay in this kind of a forest so that is very appreciatable that's why buddha asked us to stay in a, under a tree aranyagato va rukha moolagato va sunyagara gato either you stay under a tree or else you select a forest if if not there if you do not find a forest at least you go to a named an empty room where people are not shouting either all are meditating or only you are there just for meditation but under a tree he explained very nicely how to do this and he is a teacher who respected his bodhi tree seven days i have never heard about that kind of a respect given by any other person in this world looking at this uh, bodhi tree he respected without blinking eyes somebody will uh, criticize it in a different way but i see that as a very great respect uh, this bodhi helped me to find the wisdom so i respect it he thought seven days so that kind of a teacher he was another time one god came to supreme buddha and explained about the the fear he felt so uh, bhante when this day time in this uh, in this noon when the birds are shouting i feel shocked i don't like it i feel little scared supreme buddha what he said was uh, when the, in this day time the birds are singing i feel so comfortable i like it that much of uh, uh, attachment it's not craving again i'm telling you but he loved the nature 
never criticized, never disturbed the nature. Supreme Buddha was kind of. And also he was a great scientist. Now I am going to explain you how kind of an improved science he had. When you take this, our month is measured as 30 days or 31 days. According to the year, there are 12 months. Supreme Buddha did not measure the month like that. Not solar year, not solar month. That was lunar month. The lunar month means we measure the month according to the rotation of the moon, the completion of the moon. Full moon day, new moon day and another two days in between. Uh, 15 days full moon, another 15 or 14 days new moon. Again, another 15 of uh, 15 days full moon. Always the full moon comes in 15 days. Uh, new moon day, either 15 or 14, it happens. According to that only, the month completed. Then, Durutu Navan Madimbak, likewise, we have poya days. These poya days are coming definitely according to the month of the end of the month, according to lunar month, not solar system, solar countings, that is lunar countings. This counting is very perfect. When you compare with the lunar uh, solar system rotations, um, 12 months are completed and the mother's womb, the child is spending uh, 10 months, dasamase, according to this number of months, 29 or 30 days. Uh, the lunar month counting is used in Ayurvedic medicine also. Now, when you take trees, plants, when you want to take the, the phloem as a milky phloem from the trees, like rubber trees, that is very uh, successful in full moon poides, but not new moon poides. When you plant something, new plants, uh, full moon poides, uh, before the full moon poides, the seven days is nicely uh, you can select, because planting, they are absorbing more nutrition from the uh, soil and they grow up. But new moon day and before new moon day, if you uh, plant small tiny plant uh, seedlings, they do not grow very well because there is an attraction, gravity from the moon as well. When the sun and the moon both together in one side of the uh, sky, you know these uh, tides, high tides happens in the ocean. That is scientific. That happens in full moon day, full moon day, the most of the the, the gravitational attraction of the moon is high, uh, scientifically it is happening like that. And new moon day, if you are cutting trees to take the bark to make furnitures like this, new moon day is the best day because then the phloem is less, xylem is high. The harder part in the, in the tree is uh, higher than the phloem and the milky part. Then your work is successful in new moon poetry. So, this nature was nicely understood by our previous ancestors, not like us. They were real, they are really sensitive. Even I can remember my mom, if she asked me to take the, take the umbrella in the morning, no sign of rain, but in the evening it's definitely raining. I don't know how they recognize, they are very sensitive. Uh, son, you have to take the umbrella today. In the evening there will be rain. Most of the times, rained. So, this sense, is the way they uh, communicate with the nature. That's why uh, we, uh, we get those experiences. And uh, did you recognize during the year, the sunrise not in the same time? Sometimes at 5.15, 5.30, sometimes very closer to 6. It differs, it changes. We have a chart according to that. And the noon also changes, not that happening. The sun goes to the top of the head of us, it changes the time according to the nature, according to the rotations, revolvings of the world. Then another important thing, according to science, according to Supreme Buddha, childbirth. What do you know about the childbirth? How do you, how do you celebrate your birthday? What is your birthday? I challenge you, your birthday is wrong. Even my birthday was wrong. As I uh, mentioned, I, I wrote in the uh, calendars, it was wrong. Actual birthday, 
is the day you planted or you selected your mother's womb. Nobody can say exactly what is the date, but uh, you select your mom's womb one day, many years ago, if you are 20 years old, according to your birthday uh, in the birth certificate, 20 plus 7 months, 20 plus 8 months before, you selected your mother's womb. At that day is your birthday, not the day you came out of your mother. Just imagine, within six days, you, uh, the doctors can detect whether you are a boy or a girl, the child, the embryo, the uh, medulla is growing into an embryo, the embryo is growing, the limbs are growing, legs and uh, hands, uh, arms, heart starts beating, you are thinking, the child, the, the fetus, the, the embryo is having mind, having a mind, thinking, and I have heard one day, one person explained to me, Bhante, when this abortion, uh, artificial abortion happens, that means when the, uh, illegally they put the tools and destroy the, when they try to destroy the embryo, fetus, the fetus is trying to escape from these tools. So, just uh, think, the fetus, the embryo can feel it, they are scared. Even when the mother is listening to a song, the fetus, the embryo is listening. So when they put the tools and try to kill the womb, kill the baby inside, the baby also tries to escape his life. You are destroying a human life. So it is illegal in Sri Lanka. And before the birth, so it proves the child, the child has already started growing, getting old, getting grown step by step in the mother's womb, then your exact birthday is not the birthday which is written in your birth certificate. Your exact birthday is, uh, you have to uh, add at least eight, nine months to that birthday. Then is your, you will find your real birthday. Uh, and when I spoke to my brother, he told me, Swam, uh, Bhante, Swami Nuhansa, and he explained about in Korea, I think, the Korean people after the childbirth, they celebrate the child's first birthday within uh, four or five months. That's exactly correct. We don't know exact date, but uh, if the child born in nine months, 10, 11, 12, within three or four months, the child's birthday exactly that month you can celebrate. Then. Uh, if your birthday is January, then you have to add nine months, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, you can celebrate your birthday if you have, if you have birthdays uh, on January. Can you understand? Then the scientifically, Supreme Buddha has explained the birth and why did I explain this? Because we can be fully ordained, Upasampada, only after completing 20 years old. 20 years old monk only can be Upasampada, fully ordained, and you can be fully ordained uh, 19 plus because of this uh, womb time period. With this womb time period, you can take six or seven months. Usually, we take six because child can be both born in seven months. Because of that, we usually take six months from the mother's womb and give add to the birthday the age and become 20 years old and selected for Pusampada. It happens in Sri Lanka also. You can take from mother's womb many months, about six. So that is really scientific. You won't understand this. 2500, more than that, years ago, our great scientist explained this scientific information to us without having at least a test tube at least a microscope. One day, one Bhante uh, spoke to Supreme Buddha, Bhante, I cannot drink this water. Because from supernatural powers, in, in his divine eye, he has seen there are microorganisms. Then Supreme Buddha asked, okay, you take a cloth and filter the water and drink. Mo do not bother that more than that. Because we drink water. I, actually, when I breathe, lot of bacteria like microorganisms go through my nose. 
and when I speak or exhale this bacteria or any other microorganism they come out this full of nature is full of microorganisms so you cannot get rid of all these things it is nature so you cannot sweep the uh, path we are walking and walk it is un it is not possible always you will have to keep uh, a broom or equal broom or any other kind of peacock feathers to sweep the uh, path you are walking because ants are there different microorganisms are there it's difficult to handle then you will never be able to go your path go your journey today if you want to go today you will have to start it many days earlier uh, this the supreme buddha's teaching is so practical and we cannot uh, kill hurt innocent animals of course but to disturb that you must use your mind without mind you do not want to worry about that one day i can remember i when i was a child about 5 6 years when i was running in the in home i trampled one beetle uh, at that time i even i loved loved animals and i was crying non stop crying because i trampled that beetle and it was uh, not dead but struggling to li live uh, severely damaged when my mother came and asked why are you crying so i told like i trampled this beetle and it is going to die still uh, struggling then what she told she did not have a lot of big knowledge about science and she did not have big knowledge he didn't she didn't uh, have any uh, uh, degree about uh, biology zoology but she told me son don't worry uh, you did not trample uh, that animal by yourself by thinking you did uh, with your sense uh, suddenly mistake and it happened so then do not worry because you did not have a desire to kill this animal it is a mistake so the nature knows that she uh, explained it was so easing my mind easing my heart because uh, this nature knows you did not want to kill him kill it then i was so calm and uh, happy and relaxed okay i did not want to kill that beetle that's how the nature if you do not think to disturb the nature nature knows that if you want to disturb the nature nature knows that also if you are having bad feelings in your mind karma chetana knows that if you do not have a bad feeling heart feeling impurities nature do not punish you that is we call karma and vipaka it happens karma vipaka the deed what kind of a deed you do and the result comes accordingly the way you are thinking if you do not have a thought about a bad bad activity just the uh, activity bodily activity or word is not enough to give you bad results the bad results comes when the mind joins with your activities for an example uh, there is a very big karma if you kill your mother or father a human being mother or father you will definitely get the visa to go to the hellish realm you will never escape definitely you have to go next life only next life uh, further you you have to manage but uh, that is according to anantarya karma uh, definitely you will have to go to the hellish realm if you kill your mother and father even uh, it, it doesn't controlled and returned or given to you as a result by anybody else that is nature that is nature supreme buddha does does not want you to go to the hellish realm and when you kill your mother or father so, uh, he doesn't write it in a paper okay you kill your mother and next life you go to the hellish realm nobody is there to write if brahma or any other supernatural being is not there in this world then who controls these things you did it you have to go that is nature the balancing of the nature if you are doing black things the result comes in a black way and i will give you an advice according to this natural sciences the nature of the nature if your mother or father is uh, on the bed in the hospital seriously 
uh, going to die. Machines are there, cell lines are given, uh, blood is given, the catheters are there, uh, and all these facilities are there. Then the, and then the artificial respiration also given through a machine, inhaling and exhaling. Then doctors say, okay, your mother will die very soon. There are some more patients expecting these machines. So shall we remove those machines? Yeah, I need your permission to remove these machines. Because no use of keeping these machines with your mom, she will die. Then what will you do? Thinking about other, pa other patients and thinking about your mother. Do not give an answer to remove the machines because you are responsible for your mother's death then. Then you will definitely get the visa to the hellish rail next time. So be careful. Doctor, I cannot give a decision. You take a decision. I do not want my mom to die at least one second earlier. That should be your answer. Because if you take these machines away with your permission, you are taking your mother's some more breaths away, some more lifetime, at least one, two seconds away and she is losing her life because of your result, your uh, answer, then you have responsible for that. Be careful, never give an answer like that because she is your mother, he is your father, biological father I mean, not the mother or father who took care of you, but the mother or father who gave you the birth, responsible for your birth. So your mother, biological mother, biological father are very important for your life. You can collect a lot of merits by treating your mom and dad. You can collect a lot of dismerits by uh, disturbing, blaming, uh, and uh, not giving facilities with, while you're having, or else uh, maybe hitting, uh, killing. You can collect a lot of dismerits through your mother and father. That is the nature. So, the nature, we cannot see everything. Thankful to Supreme Buddha, we saw everything of everything in this noble doctrine. To see this everything of everything, you will have to close your eyes and start observing your breath. You have to open your eyes and Carefully observe the slow phenomena that is happening, especially when the flower of flower blooming flower, when uh, the butterfly comes through in uh, from a cocoon. Be patient and observe the nature. You will learn a lot, a lot of things. One day, one of my biology teachers he asked, "Have you seen the flower bloom?" We all said, "Yes, yes, yes, yes." At last, he, he asked, okay, did you see that petals are opening one by one, one by one? Nobody has seen. So for that, you have to spend the whole night. When the flower is blooming in the morning, you will have to spend the whole night to see that the flower is blooming. After explaining that, I thought, yes, we haven't seen, we haven't observed the nature closer. We, do not, we did not have patience to do that. If you do not have patient, tolerance, to observe, then you cannot uh, improve your mindfulness. At least you, will, you won't be able to put water from one bottle to another if you do not have the mindfulness. You have to concentrate about this. Concentration is very important, whatever the work you are doing. Abhikante patikante sampajana kari hoti, alokite vilokite sampajana. When you go forward and back, you have to think, you have to con uh, concentrate what you are doing. When you look forward and side, you have to concentrate what you are doing. You have to think, you have to mi keep mindfulness there, not anything else. Just imagine when you go to the washroom, when you go, uh, when you go to the toilet, then do your personal activities, things, passing urine or fecal. So at that the time you are planning the day, but that is not the time for you to plan the day. That is the time you have to understand that I am passing what I ate yesterday. Then you will realize, okay. Is Uchara Pasavakam is Sampajana Kari Hoti. Asite, Pite, Khaite, Saite, what you are eating, drinking, you have to pay attention on that, not anything else. 
it improves your wisdom, it improves your mindfulness, concentration, and for uh, students, those who are studying, it gives a very big uh, strength for you to remember what you are learning. This is not, uh, this uh, noble doctrine is not for you to pass your exams, but it helps as a byproduct. You will have a lot of benefits when you pay attention on this. And meditation is also giving you a lot of benefits like anapana, metta, these things. It is not the time to explain all these meditation methods, but personally, in my case, we feel that we have a lot of benefits. I'm, uh, it means we are not uh, very deep meditators, but uh, we, we are not uh, having those uh, absorptions I'm not having. And so on, those states, I'm not there, but uh, Apparently, a lot of benefits are there to when you purify your mind from bad thoughts step by step. In Buddhism, it gives you, as you are a wise person, normal, ordinary wise person can follow this path. But not for a psychologically uh, disabled person. I must tell you, if you have a depression kind of a psychological uh, problem you know, or else if anybody recognize your family member or the student in your class the teachers uh, this child this son my son is uh, psychologically uh, not strong enough then suddenly meditating is not, uh, maybe threatful you have to go to a doctor and you have to go to a meditation teacher and take instructions especially when you take that uh, kind of uh, autism or um, like dyslexia, these kind of psychological uh, effects, those who are having those psychological problems, the mind, uh, the mental problems, meditation is not suitable at once. You have to understand the nature. When you are having a fever, you should go to a doctor. When you have headache, you have to go to a doctor. When you have a cancer, you have to take that cancer away or take medicine to ease that. Meditating is not giving you all these uh, med medicine. Meditation is not a medicine for all these uh, physical problems. The mental disability is physical problem in your brain. Uh, and you have to go to a psychiatric, especially, and take instructions. All the, the person who is taking care of him want to take the victim to the psychiatric and get in, uh, more instruction because autism person he is unable to he un, he is unable to communicate with people properly this is a there is a lack of communication and uh, disability of communication there will be problem for autism people and for the dyslexia they are having uh, writing reading problems as you know uh, so then you have to consult the seek the doctor's instructions and uh, when we take anxiety, that there also you feel lost. You feel uh, I am alone and I don't have any help. My loving people have left me. So then also there you have to take, need your, you need uh, help of another person. Not ex uh, straight away, okay, Buddha will save me, that Buddha, I will go to the statue and worship and offer these things and get rid of these things. No, it doesn't happen. This is the nature. So you have to work accordingly, then only you can understand what is happening. And split personality is a very diff different uh, way of psychological and the split personality person suddenly changes according to that uh, in non-human beings also that because of non-human activities in your human body also it happens sometimes. You are naturally you are in an, one time and again you are changing to another person according to the non-human uh, and you split your personality suddenly it happens so uh, we want to consult the doctor in that kind of a situation in attention uh, hyperactivity uh, in my case I, I met many years ago a hyperactive student uh, a child in grade five or six before we finish the question he has given the answer and we cannot sit on a, in a one place for a, for few minutes at least hyperactive but step by step with the help of the doctors with the help of the teachers 
that child improved and he is a teacher today. So, then you will have to understand, today you understand this, Buddhism is all about the nature, the universe, the world, but you cannot study everything running from your home to the next galaxy, Andromeda, by yourself, you will never finish learning. According to Supreme Buddha, you will finish learning these things by sitting, closing eyes and observing your own body and your own mind. Your own body, kaya kaya nupasi vihirati, vedana su vedana nupasi vihirati, your feelings. And your mind, chitte chitta nupasi vihirati, dhamme su dhamma nupasi vihirati, the changes in your mind, then you will realize the whole universe as there is a lemon on your palm. You will understand, you can, as you can see the fruit on your palm nicely, you can rotate and see, you will observe the whole universe by sitting for meditation. I hope you learned something and we just made a simple compar comparison between science and Buddhism. I did not want to explain about the other religions. The people tried to ease their mind by explaining their sins to another person, but there is no person who can wash them out. You, have, you are responsible for all the deeds what you do. Uh, most of the religions, uh, they go to their religious places and speak to someone, but nobody is there. And they think that my sin is washed out and gone away, then I'm, now I am uh, free, but it doesn't happen. If you do something bad, you are responsible, the result comes, you have a way to escape by doing good things. That is the nature, that is the world, that is the universe. When you understand that, you can protect your activity, action, word, and also the mind. Then you will realize how valuable person you are, how valuable my human life is. Because this one hour program is not useful for a dog. This one hour program is not useful for a cat, monkey, because they cannot understand. You can understand, you can sit in a one place and observe your body and mind and get rid of all this suffering. When you get rid of all this suffering, when you end up this suffering, when you end up this birth and death, that is the end of the whole universe. That is we call Nibbana, that is we call the wisdom, that is we call the cessation and purification of your mind. That is Supreme Buddha's hope and he expected us to do like this. One day my students will follow my instructions. Yes, we are following, you are following. One day we will realize how valuable is it. So then we are going to wind up today and we wish you all the best for your meditation and uh, we wish you find the wisdom through your meditation and Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, Triple Gem will bless you. May the Triple Gem bless you. Thank you.